We're learning more about the decades-long investigation that led to the arrest of a Jacksonville pastor and two other men. Paul Dial is charged with capital sexual battery. Police in Oklahoma arrested Jerome Teschendorf and Vernon Williamson. JSO says the sexual and physical abuse of minors at the North Jacksonville Church started some 30 years ago. News from Jackson reporter Marilyn Parker joins us live outside the church. Marilyn, I understand you spoke with a former sex crimes prosecutor about how they finally arrived at these arrests. And you know, cases like this take time. I'm told that sexual assaults of any kind are the hardest to get convictions in. And you can see this church is isolated and pushed back somewhat off of Old Kings Road. There's no telling what all it had to take to get evidence to make that arrest on Wednesday. This report from 2003 names Paul Dial specifically. It details a person telling police they were molested after staying overnight at the pastor's house. Dial's house is on the property of his church, the Jacksonville Assembly of the Body of Christ. He's in jail now, charged with capital sexual assault, and is a suspect in an investigation with multiple reports of sexual and physical abuse of minors at the church. It's been 19 years since this report, and Dial was just arrested Wednesday. Former sex crimes prosecutor Marianne Shields explains what changed from then to now. My assumption would be that they've interviewed a number of people. There could have been um, what we, you know, phone calls between alleged victims and the suspects that were recorded by law enforcement that could have helped to corroborate what has happened. Before his arrest Wednesday, Dial made a blog post. He titled it God Is and wrote about evil spirits being emissaries or messengers of God created by God to do evil, which are good for his divine purpose. He posted it just hours before JSO raided his church. Why did this require a raid? The raid can corroborate victim stories. Rick Alexander is also a former sex crime prosecutor. We spoke about the tip in 2020 that JSO said led to the arrest and the over 30 years of reported victim abuse. Why did it take so long to make an arrest? It's the nature of the abuse and the abuser and the power that they have um, over that small set of people and it's it's insidious now the former prosecutors say it's about proving what witnesses and survivors say happened And it could be a while before we see this case go to trial. We got a statement today from Cynthia Crawford. She is an attorney representing some of the survivors in this case. The statement reads in part, our clients provided information to law enforcement, which revealed both long-term sexual and physical abuse of minors in the church, spanning a period of over 40 years. Many of the victims have been diminished, extorted, and shut up. We rest easier now that their voices have been heard. The attorney tells us she plans to hold a press conference this Monday where we'll also hear from some of those victims. She's also asking for any other victims to come forward. We have her information on this story on newsforjax.com. Kent. Marilyn, one of those former prosecutors that you spoke with, I, I heard mentioning controlled calls being used as evidence. Could They could be used in this case? Yeah, we've seen them used in these types of cases before. And what would happen is the police would tell the survivors or the victims kind of what to say on the phone call to get the suspect to give incriminating admissions. Again, these have been used plenty of times before. And sometimes with crimes like this that have happened over years, it's very hard to get physical evidence. So that's where these calls come in handy. All right, Marilyn Parker reporting live from the north side of Jacksonville tonight.